Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The words from Mark's Gospel. And here are some more words, and you may well be able to guess the Originate of these words as I'm reading them. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountain top and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. He's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And so I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory, the coming of the Lord. The uh, last words, of course, of the final speech given by Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968. The next day, he was assassinated in Memphis. The mountain top, the promised land, difficult days ahead. Recalling there the journey of Israel, struggles of a nation, a nation on the brink of the promised land. Now, just when the dream is in sight, Moses' part in the story is over. He could climb Mount Nebo, which is uh, the mountain that he climbed to see the future see Israel's inheritance. He could climb, but he couldn't go in. It wasn't for him to go in. Difficult days and difficult days ahead for others. So in the Abram Mountains on the plains of Moab, the journey of Moses had come to an end. Well, mountaintop experiences, we often call them, don't we? And usually what we mean by that in a, a faith sense is amazing moments of connection with God rather than intense and worrying encounters. They're frequent in the Bible and they show us God meeting with his people. Moses uh, went to my Nebo, but uh, earlier in his life and uh, career, as it were, he'd been on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments. Noah, of course, came to rest in the ark on Mount Ararat hearing God's rainbow covenant, the health of the earth. Abraham on Mount Moriah, offering Isaac in sacrifice before he was reprieved. Elijah on Mount Carmel, overcoming the prophets of Baal, that violent and challenging moment in history. Of course, Jesus himself here in our reading, transfigured, transformed, changed on Mount Hermon. It was memorable. It was also frightening. It was far reaching. It was intense. It was dangerous. It was thrilling. Meeting God on the mountaintop was all these things, but it always led further, always touched deeper, always pointed higher. Meeting God on the mountaintop was both an end. They got there, they experienced it, but it was also a beginning. Where was it going next? Well, the transfiguration of Jesus is mentioned in detail in three of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. And common to all these accounts are these three witnesses, Peter, James and John. 
there's the bright transformation of Jesus, there's the appearance of Moses and Elijah, and common as well to the Gospels uh, is this strange offer of Peter's to build shelters, uh, followed by the voice of God from the cloud. At the end, all the Gospel writers agree that Jesus alone remained. Uh, Moses and Elijah were no longer present. Jesus, only Jesus, as the Message Bible translates. The major type of experience was followed then by the chaos. Uh, the lots of mountain of the cry, the difficult days ahead. Jesus then turned his face to Jerusalem on the cross. Well, the major type of experience could be followed by trouble down below. For example, I mentioned Moses um, on the Mount Sinai, and here in the reading about transfiguration, he appears representing the uh, the law. And he received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. But when he went back down, what was going on there? Well, he found the Israelites were worshipping this uh, golden calf, weren't they? Or Elijah, uh, again, referenced in the reading here and thought uh, commonly to be representing the prophets. Um, Elijah battled the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, um, challenging, testing, violent encounter. But then... He, in his turn, fled from Jezebel. Trouble down below. Moses and Elijah both saw God in power on the mountain. They found trouble waiting for them back down below. And trouble that they find hard to process, to come to terms with, to cope with. These two great figures of the Old Testament who met with Jesus also met with trouble. And so now Jesus was about to do the same. What an amazing experience, encounter, revelation. Um, this transfiguration was, yet the cross lay ahead, the mountain raised up high, but the valley waited below. Now, on top of a mountain, our first thought is to admire the view, isn't it? We work our way up, get to the top, think, wow, what an amazing view. And the uh, view behind me, I'm not really there as you can probably tell, but is the uh, view from uh, uh, Unskidor Church room. And I think this picture was taken one uh, Easter Sunday morning, early when the um, cloud inversion was flying over Keswick. So uh, uh, but what an amazing view, actually, an amazing view. If you've never been up to Unskidor Church room, do take the opportunity to do so. So, but our first thought is to admire the view, isn't it? And our second thought, what we've got up a mountain, is to pat ourselves on the back for getting up there in the first place. However, and it's only recently I just started to reflect on this, that's something we hardly ever find in the Bible, people admiring the view, taking in the scenery. I'm sure they did, but it's not something that's really referenced. Uh, for example, I mentioned Moses climbing Mount Nebo to see the promised land at the beginning of these words. Um, and for sure, that's um, one example. Yes, uh, he kind of saw the whole of the land as it were. He took in the view, but unfortunately, he died straight after taking in the view. So that's not the kind of thing he could come back down and write a blog, a journal, or show some photographs, is it really? But in the Bible, what do we get on top of a Bible mountain? Uh, well, for Moses, think about Mount Sinai, um, there was awe, there was worship, there was fear, there was instruction, Ten Commandments, there was commissioning, go back down, there was warning, there was meeting with God, repentance, pleading, Moses pleading with God to accept the people, there was prayer, there was revelation, all those things. For Elijah, I meant Carmel. Well, as we already mentioned, really, there was conflict, wasn't there? Really, there was there was tension, there was testing, uncertainty. What was going to happen? You know, who was going to prevail, Elijah or the prophets of Baal? Uncertainty, risk, risky, risky challenge for Elijah on his own against the four hundred prophets of Baal. There was choice: who are you going to follow, God or some other god? Commitment, repentance, change, faith, meeting with God, prayer, and revelation again. For Jesus and the disciples here on uh, Mount Hermon, uh, sometimes uh, people would say the Mount of Transfiguration is uh, uh, Mount Tabor, and um, 
I've also seen one suggestion that it, it also was uh, uh, Mount Nebo as a parallel to the Moses experience. But for, for my purposes, I'm like taking Mount Hermon because in the gospel, that's probably the nearest appropriate mountain to Caesarea Philippi, which is the location that they appeared to be in uh, uh, when these words were um, recalled. So Jesus and disciples on Mount Hermon, there was this revelation, transfiguration. There was commissioning. Jesus, if you like, was being commissioned to go forward to the cross. And the disciples in, in their way were being commissioned to hold this truth, to keep it, uh, keep it to themselves, ready to share. There was resolve. Jesus set his face to Jerusalem. There was worship. There was awe, entrusting, confirmation, affirmation. This is my son. There was fear. They were terrified. There was confusion, secrecy. Don't tell anyone. There was faith. Well, all the mountaintop experiences today's reading uh, recalls are intense, aren't they? Meeting with God, a revelation, the power of God. So definitely not a deck show moment. I'm sure they did enjoy the view, but um, perhaps not the wall to wall exhilaration that you know, we would tend to think of as being the mountaintop experience. And uh, um, here in um, in Cumbria, of course, um, um, the view, if you think I'm in this view spot here, behind me would be uh, with Skiddo. And if uh, you're familiar with being up there at any time, particularly if it's like a little bit windy, like it's um, it's ferocious and, um, you know, you won't be hanging around long to uh, um, enjoy the view. So, Sometimes the experiences with God were like that in the Bible. Well, we don't know what will happen in life, do we? It may be a mountain top. It may be a valley. And maybe they go together. We don't know what will happen, but we do know who goes with us. Here's those verses from the passage again, but this time in the message translation. Peter interrupted. Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus only. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus. And one final thing, where do things grow most? Where do things grow best? Do they grow best on the mountaintop or do they grow best in the valley? Just like the picture behind me. Where is it greenest? Is it greenest on the uh, mountaintop? It could be green, but is it greenest on the mountaintop? Or is it greenest down in the valley? Where does the water flow in the end? Down to the valley. Where is the shelter from the storm? Down in the valley. If we feel, perhaps, uh, listen to these words like we're in a valley right now, however we describe that valley, whatever it means to us personally, may we be encouraged that it may just be the place that will grow the most, not necessarily the most comfortable place, but the place will grow the most. It may just be the place where we find the greatest peace. And uh, noticing the uh, the sheep in the uh, in the picture behind me, you may recall uh, the twenty third Psalm. And the valley may just be the place where God is present unexpectedly. So may. God bless you unexpectedly today, whether you're on a mountain top, whether you're in a valley. Now let's pray. Lord God, whether today we are on the mountain top or whether we are in the valley, however do you describe or experience these moments, may be blessed by you. May be blessed by you unexpectedly and in ways which draw us closer to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care, and uh, God bless you.